Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to part two of our colouring in my journey through Africa. And we've got this far. My book is falling apart, which is really sad. Um, <clears throat> and we've done the, the sky and the waterfall and the rocks. Um, I just wanted to show you really quickly if that's okay. Um, I did show you how I used the Posca in part one to make the clouds, but I'm just gonna take a white Prisma and um, I'm just going to show you that you can colour over this once it's been activated and really pull out that white. Isn't that cool? So you can sort of add to the, define the shapes a bit more if you want. So I don't want to mess too much because I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out so far. But you can add colour over the top of that. There we go. Okay, so I've shown you that bit. Um, as you can see, I've gone round a couple of bubbles, but it's just with paint pen. I will show you that. Let's start with our beautiful lady. So if we come down here, let's do her skin. Let's get that done. So I've just got three colours. Um, I've got beige red or pale flesh. Um, burnt ochre and I've got Van Dyke Brown. So the first thing we're going to do is put the um, beige red on her skin. I'm going to put that all over her skin so we get a nice peachy undertone. I think that's the only bit. I think that's dressed there. Okay, then we're going to go in with our burnt ochre and we're going to pull that out put that in, start to put that in where we want the darker bits of skin okay and then our Van Dyke Brown And then we'll activate it. And then we can wait for it to dry as usual, like we did on the first part one. And um, then we'll go over it again with pencil. Okay. So I'm taking my fine um, detail brush from Kurataki and I'm going to use that like I did. I'm sure I used that and the Derwent in part one. And I'm just wiping my brush off at the top here. And it will go very pale to start with, which is no bad thing because then we can go over it with our pencils when they're dry. Okay, so we've started her beautiful skin and I think her dress, we're going to start with three colours, which is, where did I put my piece of paper? Here. Um, we're going to do deep scarlet red, orange glaze and dark cadmium yellow to start with. So I'm going to go in with um, deep scarlet red to start with. So we're going to put our three colours down and then when it's dry we'll come back and we'll add to it. Let's pull that down. I don't want to add too much because when you activate these pencils they really activate and they're really um, vibrant which is beautiful that yeah you do get that little bit of drag like I said in period uh, period one where am I school um, in part one when they're dry but um, once um, you've activated them they activate beautifully and then they color over beautiful so that was orange glaze and now this is dark cadmium yellow. I'm going to keep it um, the red to a minimum to start with because we can go back in. But I wanted this beautiful like earth tones, so reds and browns and greens on her clothing. Um, okay, so I'm activating from the lightest. 
and then I'm just pulling up into that darker red cleaning off my brush and then just pulling it down that way we keep the colours where we want them and um, keep those highlights okay Make that a little bit darker that side and then we'll do the same here I should have done this all at once so that none of my page was wet when I put this down but hey ho okay put the red in there so deep scarlet red I hope you're up for another long one because although there's not much left to do I think it will take some time so I'm coming in here because it's dark in there it's going to be behind those plants that she's gathered then our orange glaze There we go, and then our dark cadmium yellow. Oh, the dog next door's out to play. So I had some beautiful gifts sent, and I was just so overwhelmed. Um, a lovely, lovely lady contacted me on Facebook um, and has sent me the first and second Clara Markova books. Can you believe that? The generosity. Um, I, yeah, I will show you them, but they're just magnificent. And I couldn't get over it. It was very emotional, as you can imagine. Um, we have finished. If you are not aware, I've got membership and we are colouring Romantic Country to the second tale together. And um, I've finished the first um, page on it. Um, where did I put it? Let me just give you a quick peek. For all of you that aren't aware, is this my practice one? I've got two books. I've fluffed this book up so many times. No, here it is. So um, let me just come out. Here it is, the finished page. So we've been doing this on our Colouring Book Completion Club and our aim is to complete this book together. Uh, it's on membership so um, if you are interested in joining us, there's a few of us now and it's getting really exciting and I'm going to set up a web page so that we can share colour conversion charts and um, our pictures that we've done. Um, and um, yeah, it's, really, it's going to be really good. So if you're interested in joining us, down below just below me, in between my name I think it is and subscribe there's a little word, little, the word join, just press that and it will give you all the instructions you need or there's a link in the description box as well so shameless plug out of the way let's carry on, is her skin dry? yeah so we're going to go back in with our skin colours I'll bring you in slightly closer because she's so tiny so, um, what colour is it? Beige red at the front of her face and neck there, her arms. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun over there, and um, like I said, I'm just gonna I'm gonna set up a, a website so that we can share all our images together. Um, it's really good fun. So thank you to all my members that have come over. It it just it's gonna it's gonna be a game changer for me. It really is. The aim will be that um, obviously with my disabilities, the fibromyalgia and the pain and the fatigue, that the aim would be is that I could stop work. And I would be able to bring you. A whole lot more colouring. Back to our pale colour. Pop 
that in and then we're going to get a little bit of um, coral it's called and I think it was medium flesh initially and we're just going to put that on her cheek it's such a tiny space it's quite hard but I need to give her a bit of gorgeous colouring there there we go isn't she pretty there we are um, and just writing that on my notes so that when I come to edit it we've got it there we go okay now what else have we got um, what did I pick out oh the three colors okay so let's choose some let's do these little plants down here then I'm gonna to have to go off and plant some more so I've got, it would help if you knew, wouldn't it? Chrome Oxide Green, Juniper Green and May Green. I want to keep things fresh and vibrant. So the May Green does that for us. So I'm going to cover the whole thing in May Green. All these little fresh shoot-like ones. And then we're going to go in with a little bit of juniper green. Can you see? There we are. Okay, I'm going to activate that before we put the dark green on. And it's probably wise to do that because I don't want to make these too dark. I want them, like I say, to be, like, they're water plants, so I want them to look sort of fresh and vibrant. There we go, simple as that. Okay. And then I'm going to do, so I'm going to do <coughs> all of these grasses dotted about are all going to be done like that. So even those ones there. So we'll just do those two colours to start with. The ones up here on top of the waterfall. We'll do those two colours to start with. Then I'll come back when it's dry and we'll add to our lady's dress and the plants. All right, my lovelies, I will see you in a second. Okay, we're all dry and ready to go. I think what I'm going to do is instead of add, yeah, no I am, I'm going to add the dark green that we said, which was, uh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to go back in dry with chrome oxide green. Um, I've done it here and I've just sort of streak it in. I think that was the dark colour anyway, was it? Yes. No. Oh, I don't know now. Got myself in a pickle. So, um, yeah, just dropping some chrome oxide green in there. Just dry. I'm not going to activate it. Just to give it a little bit more dimension and interest. Like that. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this beautiful pelican. He is staring at me. And um, he needs some colour. He's like, what are you doing? Why is everything else coloured and I'm not? Get on with it. So <laughs> I've got um, five colours and my white Posca pen. So we are going to do, and I've, I've looked at um, pelican type birds, but this is a Lucy pelican type bird. So I'm making it up. So we are going to use the red and orange that we did for the beautiful lady's skirt and then we're going to use red violet, salmon, uh, burnt ochre, cream and warm grey too. So let's start with his beak first and get that out of the way. So we're going to use a deep scarlet red and I'm going to put this in up here and I'm just lightly doing it. Because we can go back in and deepen him up when he's dry. 
and I not all of this I'm going to activate. I'm going to, just going to use the pencils dry in some areas. But we'll do it together. So that's the um, deep scarlet red. Then we're going to put in the orange glaze. And I'm going over that deep scarlet red. And bringing that orange glaze out. Like that. And then we're going to put in the um, dark cadmium yellow. And again I'm going to backtrack and go over the whole thing. That will give us a completely, hopefully, completely different look to the lady's skirt. And then we are going to activate that bit. Just make sure my brush is clean, as you can see. Okay, let's get that beautiful yellow going. And then we'll start getting that red going. Clean my brush off and then we're going to do that centre bit. just picking up some colour off that yellow piece just by going back over with my brush and then taking it onto the cleaning it off on the scrap bit of paper I've got next to me there we go that'll do until we put some um, put some until it's dry. Oh, I don't know what is wrong with me today. Okay, warm grey two. So we're going to cover his beak just gently, his feathers up here and we'll do down his neck and we'll stop there. We'll just do section at a time. It makes colouring things in my mind a whole lot easier. So we've got that um, warm grey two now I'm going to go in with a salmon and I'm going to run up this line on his beak here. How far did I go? I went straight down and then round his eye. I mean, there is a pelican type bird like this that I found but um, I'm just making it up and having fun. Okay, we're going to run down under his beak. Yep. All the way down to there. And I'm just sort of pulling it out in diagonal strokes. Okay, we're going to add a little bit round here, around the bottom of each of these little crests, like that. And then we're going to take our red violet and we're really going to bring out that eye. And pull that down. There we go. We're going to add some cream to this part. And up here. Down here. And then we're going to take the burnt ochre. We're going to put some of that in. here. Drop a bit of that in. Cute already. Right, I'm just going to go back in and add some more pink here. So the coral, uh, salmon, sorry. then we'll address the body. So we're going to cover it all in warm grey too. 
and then we are going to activate the warm grey too. Well, actually, we're not. We're going to put another colour in first. Warm grey too. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, warm grey six. Sorry, that wasn't in our list of things, was it? Um, so, shall I run through those quickly, the Pelican colours again, just in case. I know they'll be on the screen, but people like to have them. Warm Grey 6, Red Violet, um, I'm just trying to put them in darkest to lightest, Burnt Ochre, Salmon, Cream and Warm Grey 2. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, we're going to take our very dark Warm Grey 6. And we are going to do the underneath of these feathers and bring that out. Like that. We're going to do round his body and neck here. And here, this bit of his tail, underneath of these feathers, like that. Okay, now we're going to activate that. So, just make sure my brush is clean and I've got water. Yep, yeah, I do. Okay. And the reason I'm activating this one is because the uh, Warm Grey 2 looks so much warmer when it's activated. I don't know if you can pick up on that, the colour change. Instead of being almost cream, you get a lovely, well, Warm Grey colour. <laughs> okay, and then we can pull out that. Dark. And it blends a whole lot easier. There we go. We are going to add some more colours. Um, just going to add a little bit of water to this. Okay, and a little bit up here. Just because I want to blend it in better. There we go. Now, oh, the concentration, folks. Can you feel it? Okay. Let us. Right, the next thing I want you to do while I've got that pink out, well, while we wait for our little pelican dude to dry, I'm going to come over to these little leaves here. And I've got earth green, I've got, no, haven't got that, and I've got chrome oxide green, and we're going to use that salmon, okay? I know it sounds a bit weird, but, so I'm going in with um, our earth green, I'm going to leave a little bit there for the pink, and I'm going to reverse this side, so earth green there, leave a little bit for the pink. Just do earth green there, earth green down the centre, leave a little space for the pink and then reverse that like that. We'll drop the pink in just gives us a very interesting variation on the leaves. Now we're going to put in the chrome oxide green and just deepen up that centre. So we've got quite a lot of greenery here so we've got to play with combinations. Um, earth green. I think in my humble opinion that the polychromos 
I know they're very light fast and things, but I do think they miss out on um, pastel -y tones. So um, the watercolours are really good for that because you can just water them down. Okay, I'm not going to activate those, I don't think. I'm just going to leave them. Well, maybe I could. Let's see. So it might knock back some of that harshness. There we go, and it's bringing back out that lovely earth green colour. There we are. I'll put a bit of pink in there when it's dry, that tiny one. Um, and then I'll go over that when it's dry. Is our pelican dry? Yeah. It's only put a tiny bit of water on there. Okay, I'm going to go back in before we do anything else with our warm grey too. Just on his body. Get in there now folks. A sip of tea I do believe before it goes cold. Back in with our pinks, just to enhance around that eye. There we go, around there with our darker pink, which I've forgotten the name of, Violet Red. Okay, can have a little bit of that Violet Red at the tip of these of his little crest, couldn't we? Give him a bit more oomph. And let's put some, we've forgot the beige and cream, or I have forgot the, the beige colour and the cream, so burnt ochre in those feathers. Let's plop that in. And this will be really important when we uh, put our white Posca on there. So I'm just going to kind of pull that up. Go over that grey. And then we're going to add a little bit of cream too. Now, the important part of this is um, I'm going to put a little bit of white Prisma just here. The important part of this is, is make sure that you are happy with your colouring before you go on to do anything else. So I'm going to take the cream and um, go over his beak. So when I say anything else, what I mean in my deranged state <laughs> is a Posca. So let's get the um, dark cadmium yellow and we'll go over that. Like that. And then, last but not least, I want to add a bit of brown, I think. So let's get that. Um, let's do nugget. Nugget will be a nice colour for this. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown going down that beak and at the tip there. Um, just trying to think where do I want to put it? define these feathers a little bit more. I'm only using it very lightly but hopefully it will make um, a nice beige colour. I'm missing my um, Prisma rosy beiges and um, peach beige and all those colours. And having just completed that mammoth page, it felt like a mammoth page. Um, yeah, I, I got used to using them and pulling those specific colours for different things. Okay, flick that in. So, have a bit more there. Right, stop faffing. 
and let's get the white Posca out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out Rita's dark line there on there and then I'm just looking at the picture that I practiced here. Let's take that out gently. Fluff that up a bit. And then cover those dots on his body. And any mistakes I've made around the, the eye, I'm going to cover that up. Can you see? Because I've just moved the book. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the crest on the top of his head. And there. Just pull some little strokes in. Help to make him look a little bit more feathery, I hope. I'm just using it really lightly. Um, and I'm going to take out that dark edge. There we go. And then let's have a look at his feathers down here. So we're going to take out the top edge of these feathers so that we're left with that dark bit underneath uh, and then I'm just going to put some I mean, obviously, you could have left white patches, but I'm not that um, proficient, is that the word, with these pencils yet. I'm doing my best, and I'm trying, and I'm thoroughly enjoying them. I hope you're enjoying the page too. They take a long time because you have to layer, so there is a downside there. But the upside is um, playing and all the fun that you get with them is um, really incredible. They're such a lovely medium. Okay. Oh, the shakes have started. Make that bit white. Okay, and then I want to take that brown Let's take our nugget and let's go around that beard. Beard? Oh my gosh. You see the state I'm in? Around that beak. It's trying to do too many things at once. Too many things on my mind. Okay, nugget. Then we'll go back in with that um, orange glaze. Okay, and then the um, dark cadmium yellow. A little bit up there. Maybe a little bit on his little tufts. Even add a bit in here. I'm just messing about now. But I like the effect it's giving. Brighten them up a bit. So let's put some of that dark cadmium yellow in other places too. Yeah, I like that. I didn't want him to be dowdy. It's not realistic, but I don't care. <laughs> I like him. There we go. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Just that little bit of, of um, yellow in there. Yeah, I like it. 
sort of ties everything together. There we go. Right, stop faffing now, Lucy. Okay. Um, let's get a little bit more Posca. we go. I'm just going to leave those black bits I think, she says, which will just to help to denote texture and movement on him. Oh my goodness Lucy, step away for crying out loud. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm going to have to go off and plan the next bit. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I'm thinking that um, I might do green I'm not sure, I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave you with a little shot of our beautiful pelican and that bit's going to annoy me. We can go back over our leaves now. Um, I was going to step away but you know what I'm like. So this is um, salmon. And then I'm going to go back in with our earth green. Okay, just those little ones there. And let's knock that green back with some cream and see what happens. So it looks less muddy. That's better. So maybe I needed a brighter green. Let's chuck in, I'm just trying, we can always erase it can't we? Uh, permanent green is a nice bright green, that's better. There we go. That's better. Greens were maybe too browny, too olivey. There we go. A permanent green, that's fixed that. Yes, I'm happy with that. Let's make that a definite pink so it doesn't look like it's a mistake. There we are. All right, let me go off and plan the rest um, and we'll meet back up in a second. Okay, guys, done a little bit more planning and we're ready to go again. And I couldn't leave the white Posca alone and just more white Posca. <laughs> okay, we're going to look at this beautiful flower over here. Oh. No, don't do that. I've got my pencils out ready. Okay, now, where's my little ticket? So, we are going to use... Um, that's the wrong one. Oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. I've just turned the camera on and I'm completely lost. It's right in front of me. I, I need a brain transplant, people. Right. For this beautiful lily flower over here, we are going to use magenta. Magenta. And we're going to use alizea and crimson and pink madder lake. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me bring you in. I'll try to be less dizzy. <laughs> and then you can have a close up of the bird then when the camera stops shaking. Okay, magenta. So I'm going to go round these little bits. And then I'm colouring in this dark with our um, magenta. And I'm going to bring that up slightly into here. And round the edge. It's a little unorthodox, but it, it looks good. And down the edge here. Okay, then we are going to switch to um, Alizea and Crimson and we're going to work that in. 
just not so much as a bit of a sort of transitional colour. And then we're going to use our Pink Madder Lake. I think it's that one. I've left these in the tray, so um, um, Pink Madder Lake. Um, yeah, and when you open the lid, the smell off them is divine. You lose that, I think, when you have a pencil case. Okay. So, Pink Madder Lake, did I say? Yeah. Um, yeah, if you open the lid of your pencil case, it's just, the smell, oh, it's just beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to take my scrap bit of paper here. Make sure my brush is clean. So, I'm going to work the... Um, lightest colour first as we do push that colour to the edge we will go over with um, pencil again on this pull that colour in okay and I'm just going to use my brush to lift that centre bit there we go just lift that out all right, we'll do another one. So I'm going to go around these. I'm going to use my Posca over them. So we're going to make that bit dark. Pull that down a bit. Make that bit dark in there. We are, like I say, we are going to go over it, so we'll have a few, um, the same colours, but I'm going to add some grey, I think, to um, darken some areas up completely. Then our Alizea and Crimson. And then our Pink Madder Lake. Yeah. There we go. Activate that. Um, Okay, that's that one done. Well, it's done wet anyway. This is why this is taking such a long time. Then if we move to the smaller lily type flowers over here, we're going to tone that down a bit, that brightness down a bit, but keep the sort of similar colours. So I am going to use... Alizea and Crimson, Pompeian Red and Beige Red. So, um, Alizea and Crimson. And we're going to put that at the base of these flowers. When it's dry, hopefully we can put a drop a little bit of maybe some green at the tip there. Um, we're going to do that on these flowers. just in the darkest spots with this colour. Okay, then we're going to add Pompeian Red. This is much more subtle colour, it's a very pretty colour. But I didn't want them to be like very, very gentle lilies. Not on this picture, I want bright and happy and warm. Okay. Pulling that in. And then beige red. Let's just plop that in. There we go. 
and we can go back in just with a little bit of that alizir and crimson and just deepen that just the bases up and then we're going to be using um, Payne's Grey on the big flower so let's just put a little bit of Payne's Grey just a little bit in the shadowy areas there okay and there we go all right let's see is that flower dry not really Okay, did I plan anything else? This is the trouble with it, it's being patient, yes. Okay, so let's do, um, let's do her, her, um, headscarf and her top. So we had deep scarlet red, deep scarlet red and we had, um, no, orange glaze and dark cadmium yellow. Let's try to find them all now. Dark cadmium yellow. Yes, okay, so let's make sure you're in shot. We're going to do her headdress in the same oranges as her dress down here. So I'm going to put the red at the base and here. now some of these objects I am just not going to activate because they're too little and I'm, I'll have to go back over again but we'll see and then we're going in with the orange glaze And then the dark cadmium yellow. Isn't she beautiful? Aren't they lovely colours together? Okay, there we go. All right, now the top, don't be alarmed, is going to be green. I had a look at some sort of traditional African dress and um, these colours seem to pop up. So I've got May Green which is beautiful bright green. We're going to put that on her top. I'm going to try and avoid those little circles because I'm going to go over with Posca on them I think. May green, and then we're going to use that beautiful permanent green that we um, used earlier. Put our shadows in like this. It might look like quite a big space on camera, but it's so tiny. And because this is watercolour, I'm going to try and avoid the um, circles. If I want to put Posca in, you can do it, but it will pick up the pigments. So you'd have to do a couple more layers of, of uh, Posca to build it up and get it the colour that you want it. Which is a bit of a pain, but okay. Green, and I'm going to want I want green down the bottom here. So this is carry on with our permanent green here, avoiding those circles again. And then we'll switch back to our May green. go and then in here we're going to have the um no, what color did I get out 
Um, we're going to have nugget because we've already used that on the page. So I'm going to put nugget in there. And there. And that bit. And then we'll go back to permanent green in there. And then her waistband will do yellow here and the May green. Okay. And then so that was um, light yellow glaze, that yellow. So I'm going to go over the little spots with light yellow glaze because that's the colour I intend to use when I just posca it if we need it. And then we've got colour down here haven't we look. So let's take brown there. There we go. And yellow in those little triangles. Can you see everything? Yeah. There we go. Yellow in those little triangles. I have a yellow earring. So yellow glaze earring and nugget. Bit of a gold effect going on there. And then we can add in a tiny little bit of brown ochre, which is lighter. There we go. Alright. That, that actually looks really cool. Sorry, just sipping tea. Okay, let's go back to our flower, see if that's done. Yeah, that's dry. So we're going to take the Payne's Grey. I'm going to make this really deep in here. These are just going to be dry now, just using dry pencil. Okay, and then we're going to go back to our um, magenta. Just checking I've got the right colours. I've got so many colours out and ready. Go over that Payne's Grey. Okay, then we'll bring in our Alizea and Crimson back in. Go back over that. Like that. Break up any harsh edges. And then our pink matter lake. Just going to stroke that in, gentle strokes. And then I'm going to take my white stubby little prisma and pull that white, those white stripes out even further. Okay. And then we're going to take Posca. So I've got yellow here. Use any paint pen you want. This is yellow straw. And I'm going to go around those, or in those little yellow bits. And then we're going to put lots more in the centre. Like that. Obviously I can only do that bit because they're the only bits that I've coloured. Okay. So, right, oh, the other thing we've got is a lily pad, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Let's do a lily pad. Now, I have got olive green yellowish, I've got to find them all now. Olive green yellowish, permanent green, um, earth green yellowish, um, brown ochre, 
and yellow glaze and that is going to be our lily pad colours okay so let me just see so I'm going to put the dark of the greens down no I'm not I'm going to put some yellow down first I'm going to cover the whole thing in yellow glaze like that Okay, now I'm going to put the darker, brown, darker greens in, so the brown ochre, and I'm just going to randomly put it in. I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to follow the lily pad pattern, you know, the usual way you make that bit dark and whatever. So this is brown ochre. Then we're going to go in with some olive green yellowish. Then we'll go in with that beautiful permanent green and we'll mix that in. Just blend those colours in. I don't normally like for greenery like a bright green like this, but when we've used such sort of earthy tones it um, makes sense. Okay, earth green yellowish. And the reason I put that lemon underneath was to stop it getting too dark. Okay, and then we can just go back in with that lemon anywhere that you feel that it's a bit dark or too, like, too greeny blue there. You can just push that yellow in. Now you can leave it like that or we can activate it. So, um, I'm going to activate just by a series of little taps so we get some texture. And I'm going to do that. I'm not going to clean my brush off. I'm just going to leave my brush because I'm just tapping it on the paper. And it's going to help to mix all those beautiful colours up. And then when it's dry, you can go back in and... Um, refine any areas that you want to. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, what have I got left? Um, well, we've done the lady. Let's do her stick, shall we? So, if we use Payne's Grey and Brown Ochre, that should be a good mix, I think. Okay. So, let me get you in shot. So Payne's Grey will do down this edge. Like that. And then we'll try Brown Ochre with it, just so it doesn't go too, it's not too dark. Brown Ochre is a lovely colour. It's one of the really nice, um, perfect use for a lot of situations. The Brown Ochre. There we go. Is it um, a punt, isn't it? She's punting. Is that, I don't know if that's what they call it in Africa. We have like punts. I, I doubt very much this is what it's called in Africa, but I'm sure you'll know what I mean. And then I think probably we're going to have to focus on the water in a little while. Okay, let me come out. I think we need to get the water done and everything else will be easy. It will seem easy. I mean, we've got the colours, it's just placing them. Um, okay, so I'm going to go off and finish the big purple flower. You're way out there, you can't see much. There you go. All the purple pink flower and all the little lilies and lily pads. And then we'll be back and all we've really then got left is a couple of leaves, obviously the water and the fishes, that's it, and the boat. I'm just trying to make it sound easy folks, <laughs> alright, see you in a second.
Okay, I finished that, and this rock over here I started to do was the same. I was going to do it as grass, but I'm going to make it a rock because it keeps things simple. So I think we're going to do these leaves, and then we're going to focus on getting the water done, and it will, that will make a huge difference. It will feel like we've made a massive achievement. So I'm going to take those greens and that yellow that we had because for the lily pad, because it made a beautiful combination. So... Um, we are going to use um, earth green yellowish, may green and that light yellow glaze. So, oh, be brave Lucy. Okay, I'll bring you in, that will help. <laughs> oh dear, I'm so dizzy. Alright, let's put the yellow glaze on it. Just lightly. Okay. And then we can go in with the um, earth green yellowish. Now, do we go dark? Yeah, let's do dark. So earth green yellowish. Do that in the centre and bring that down. These are quite big aspects of the page. Um, and the... The fact that they're still white draws your eye to it and makes it look like we've got so much more to do than we have. So I've decided that they're going. <laughs> Earth green yellowish and then may green. And then we'll go back to that lemon. And then if we activate it, just do may green at this side. If we activate it, then we can come back and deepen it up and put some other colours on there if we want and play about with it. But let's just keep it nice and fresh green for a minute and we'll see what happens. We might like it left like that. Okay, so let me get my brush and make sure it's clean. Go from the yellow. push that green back out of there a little bit I've dragged it in too far but it's okay because we're going to go over it all right so let's do this big one so we'll do lemon yellow all over it's not lemon yellow Lucy it's light yellow glaze don't confuse the people make sure we've got enough of that on there do this one and that one just because we we'll have to be careful down here that we don't drag that magenta into this um, yellow <laughs> just gonna say yellow okay right let's do earth green yellowish in the center and pull that out And do the same on this side. Pull that out. And we'll do it on here. Make that quite dark in there. And then May Green. And then we'll put our yellow in. Like that. We'll do the same on this one.
bring that out. What's lovely is we can, when we activate, we can smooth out all those lines, all those colouring lines. Okay, and then the yellow. Okay, let's activate those. So I'm going to go from the yellow and make sure I keep that yellow on the edge, and then we'll activate that green. There we go. Gosh, this is going to be another long, long, long video. There's quite a lot of work involved, I think, in um, when you use watercolour pencils. Because, you, like say, you have to put it down, activate it if you want to activate it, let it dry, go back over it. So you're doubling up the work, really. But um, I think the results are so worth it. I think they're beautiful. I'm just being cautious there. I do not want magenta in this fresh green leaf. Okay, right, we'll leave those to dry. Okay, <coughs> now if I come out, oh no, you might be alright around the boat. Okay, I've got a lot of colours here. Um, I've got the light aqua, I've got cobalt green, I've got sky blue. I've got cobalt turquoise, halo turquoise, and I've got deep cobalt green. So, um, I think let's start with let's start with the cobalt turquoise because I know we definitely used that in part one around this boat, and so we're going to go in with that. And do you remember we followed like our path? We did sort of, we followed swishing motion of the water, if you like, didn't we? We followed Rita's lines to give us that. Um, that lovely water effect. However, we're going to have to put some dark in here just to get around this boat. I'm going to call it a boat. I don't know what else I would call it. Okay, so we'll pull that out. Now, I'm going to try a little bit of the um, halo turquoise, which is much darker, just in there as well. Just so that doesn't appear to be just flat and sitting on the surface there'll be something underneath there yeah that looks cool doesn't it and we'll put that there and go back in with that um, cobalt turquoise I don't know what colour I'm going to do a bag yet. Okay, we can bring that down a little bit further. And then let's just move down the list. What have we got next in colour there? We have got um, cobalt green. So let's put our cobalt green in. And then we're going to try to find these patterns. And stick with them as we come out further. Because A, it will make life easier, and B, um, unless you want to white all these lines out, which will take quite a while, um, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know, I just think it will make more sense. And it makes life easier. So we'll bring that out a little bit there. And up here. Yeah, I think that looks good. 
and draw a little fishy. Okay, now let's go into our um, light cobalt turquoise. And then we can put some blue in. And we can maybe even a little bit of, um, is it that earth green? Just round where the lily pads and things are. That might look quite cool. Just bring this out. Okay, let's stick with this big line here. There we go. Pull that out. We can get lighter as we come out. Like that. And then let's put in it a little bit. Let's start to introduce our sky blue, just so it's not all green. And I will put some um, Posca on it, just to um, bring out the surface of the water, maybe. Posca or Tuli art. Put that blue back in. I think this is the lightest blue we've got, isn't it? Yeah, we could use a brighter blue. Like that. Where else have we got? So, blue in there. I want to show you under the bird and things as well. Sky blue in there, bring that up. Now if you're really clever you could add some yellows and pinks and things for reflection. But okay, so we're gonna go in with our Halio turquoise under our pelican. Again for the same reasons. So it looks like he's actually got body under the water. And then switch to our cobalt turquoise. And then um, I think we'll just go straight to blue from there. And if you feel you've gone too dark, we can always activate it with water and pull some colour up. Rita's books are very good at that. We'll have a little bit of the light cobalt turquoise in those bubbles. Down there. It's in a very unfortunate position. <laughs> I just thought about that. <laughs> Sorry. I've got my Sunday hat on and I'm being naughty. Okay, more turquoise. There we go. Okay, what else? Okay, let's get, let's get, I'm just going to sharpen this pencil. Just for around with our lily pads. I knew I'd miss one. I knew I would. It's there. Big one as well. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of, right, well let's go in to start with, with Halio Turquoise and we're going to put that round our lily pads like that so again, they're not just flat, they're the, it's creating shadow and then we're going to put Earth Green because it's a nice soft colour that will just reflect with that lily pad. Ok, 
Okay, and then if we mix that with our blue, bring that blue out. You know that I haven't finished the lily pad. <laughs> oh dear. Let me kind of get just that illusion of there being green under the water. Okay. So, I'll do this one here with you, one that's complete. Halio Turquoise. Then our um, Earth Green. And then we'll go over with our Sky Blue. And you're going to need enough of that sky blue to come out and away from that to give it that illusion. Like that. A little bit more earth green in there. There we are. Right, let's go back to these leaves and have a look where we are now. And then we can finish off the water now, I think. I think after the first one and this one, I think you better finish the water off. So they're looking a bit of a mess. So let's go in and tidy them up. Earth green. And we might decide we want some other colour in there. But I know I wanted to keep that sort of fresh appearance in them. Like new... Um, the new plants you get by the water, they're all sort of lush and... Especially when they've got an abundance of water and an abundance of sun. They grow really well, don't they? Okay. That's looking better. And then our yellow. still feel it needs something, and I'm not quite sure what. What about... Mm -hmm. Don't go wrong on me now. What about if we put that... Um, oh, it's a bit risky. What about a bit of India Red that we put on the... Let's just try gently. Yeah. A little bit of India Red. Just put that in the centre, maybe just a few little spots of it. Just so it's not so boring. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Okay, I'm going to take my blender, if I can find it. They hide from me, people. It's not fair. <laughs> okay, I've got a Derwent blender here. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can just blend that out a bit. There we go. Alright, let's do the other one. So, earth green yellowish, yeah. Let's pull that out. I've got to make sure I've got a lot of lemon because I lost that in the first... Well, not lemon, light yellow glaze. Put that in, because I lost it in the first instance when I was uh, pulling out the water. I went too dark. Okay, a bit more here. And then the may green. Like that. And then 
then let's put that India red in. Gorgeous. Just stops it being so boring against that beautiful um, vibrancy of that pink. Yeah, I like that. We don't need a lot, just a, a sort of hint that it's there. And on this one, we'll put a little bit on that one. And just going to smooth this one out a bit. Take that lemon and our earth green yellowish. Just checking your own camera. bit of bravery folks, a little bit of bravery. Quite a lot of the time it doesn't work out and I fluff it up magnificently but the more um, uh, the more you hold back the less your colouring is going to develop isn't it? So Tighten that up. Okay. I'm going to take my blender for a minute and just blend that through. Oh, that's so cute. That's really cute. I like it. Okay, do, keep those colours out so I can keep note of that for when I add it. I'm just going to put a little bit more. I might have to sort of activate that one. It's a bit of a mess. Let me put a bit of water on there, see what I can do. Now I've put the blending pencil over it, that's helpful. Yeah, it's probably not going to behave, so I'll have to come back to it in a minute. Okay, let's come out and have a look. Alright, so I'm going to go off and finish the water. So round the rocks, we're going to do darker like we've done round the boat, and then just let it get lighter and lighter in other areas. Um, maybe a little bit of shadow underneath our fishies. Um, but other than that, just the light colours, so light aqua and the sky blue can be used to fill these spaces in. And you can even leave some white streaks, I think I will. These big ones, these big wiggles there, and there, those two. I think I'll leave those white. That'll look quite cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go off, try and fix my disastrous leaf. I might have to erase it so it smooths out and then go over it. And then we'll meet back up and we've just got a few elements left. I'll see you in a minute. Oh my goodness you guys, I had um, a really close call then. I had to do an emergency repair because I kept faffing with it, wouldn't leave it alone like I'm doing now. I almost went through the page here. And so I had to do um, my tracing method and stick paper over the top. Oh, so it's delayed me quite a lot. Anyway, enough about that. Let us do these butterflies. And I am going to do just two colours and then we're going to put silver over it. Um, just detailing. Okay, I'm trying to get you in close enough. Let me just move my chaos. <laughs> okay, so middle purple pink and light... Hmm, what was it? Or was it this one? It was this one. Light chrome yellow, I think. Um... So I'm going, I'm going to ignore all the little details and I'm going over with my middle purple pink, bringing that out lightly. I'm not going to activate these. I'm scared now. <laughs> and then I think it was our light, my light chrome yellow that I used. That will turn that orange. So we're going to kind of match the sky. It's going to be lovely. 
and then in with um, our light yellow glaze. So I might ditch the... I don't know, that's okay. Okay, and then let's make the body. Go back in with that uh, middle purple pink, just so we get that intensity of pink there. And do the body pink. There. Okay, and we're going to do the same on this little fella. Intensity of pink there with our middle purple pink. Following the shape of the wings, I'm going to bring that out. Then our light chrome yellow. And we're nearly there, folks. Thank goodness, I was so upset. I thought, oh no, I've ruined the whole page with those damn leaves. I was trying to be too clever with the medium that is new to me. So, anyway, I've repaired it. There we go. And then go back in and get that intensity with that middle purple pink. We'll do that here too. And then any pattern they've got on them, I'm going to use my um, Uniball Silver. And it is just silver, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's make sure we get that real intense pink in there. Then our middle colour. And then our bright yellow. So let's bring the sky into the into play. And we've got another little fella down here. We're going to do the same on this little fella. So intense pink. And they're all going to look pretty much the same at the moment. Then when we add the silver, it should give them that little bit of um, uniqueness each. I am going to get this video up to you tonight if it kills me. It's been a very busy week. I had a real upset through the middle of the week. Um, at work. I can't really go into details, just suffice to say that somebody was really, one of the, not an adult, was very unpleasant and um, it really scared me, really upset me. Um, and so I had to withdraw. Um, I still went to work and stuff, but oh gosh, it was so upsetting. But hey ho. Um, right. They're done. Oh, we've got one in the sky. One up here. Let's do him too, the same, and then I'll show you the gel pen over them. So I'm just going to colour as if there's no pattern there. I'm going to make that bright pink, that little one there. Body bright pink, just because I love it. <laughs> Then a little bit of our yellow, and they'll match the sky. They're much more intense, obviously, but um, I don't really want to introduce a lot more new colours now on the page. And we're going to come and do the bubbles in a second. Go and make sure we've got that intense colour by keep going over it. And I think it's that getting that intensity of that middle purple pink that really brings these out. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Love it. And we're going to do the same with our fishies down here. So, middle purple pink. Get that intensity in here. Our mid colour. And then our bright yellow. They look like little neon tetras is what I was thinking. So then we can have an intense pink fin at the top. Leave a little tiny gap and go in with our bright yellow. There. We can have, um, let's do the bright yellow fin at the bottom. And then we'll bring out the intense pink, middle yellow, and bright yellow. Yeah, like little neon tetras. And we're just going to go lightly on his little face. Can you see? Oh yeah, thank goodness for that. And then 
are yellow. Okay, I think it's really cute, really cute. And let's do the middle yellow and a little pink. There we go. All right, let's have a look at um, putting some gel pen on these. So let's have a look at this one. So this is my Uniball Silver and it is just silver, but it is really intense silver. So I'm just going to go round Rita's. Rita's little embellishments on there. little bit of silver yeah you can pick up on that and this one can you see yeah so just clean off my pen I do find that um, it's harder to cover things with um, pen on the watercolor This little guy has got a very beautiful pattern. There we go, we have a little dot there. And the one up in the sky. Why not? Okay. Cool. And our fishes, you can just, you could just do a little bit on the scales. I'll just keep it to the yellow bit. I can have a few dots down there. Okay. Can't leave alone. Step away before you mess it up again. All right, that's how we're going to do our fishies. We've done the butterfly. Let's have a look at pages curling. It needs to go underneath a book. Let's have a look at um, the boat. So I'm going to use obviously some traditional browns. So I'm going to take walnut brown. I've got burnt sienna, bista. Um, let's just do that to start with. So if we go in with the walnut brown and I'm going to make the base very dark up round here. And then we're going to add burnt sienna. Sorry, did I say beige sienna? That's a prisma. Burnt sienna. Bring it up. And then a bit of bista. Let's throw a little bit of cream at that. Oops, knocking everything over. Let's throw a little bit of cream in there. Okay, Vista here. Throw a little bit of cream in there. Just helps to lighten it up. And then I'm just going to take that walnut again and just darken this bit up, make sure this is nice and dark under here. Okay, now here's the scary part. Um, well, I'm going to do this first. We're going to fill the inside of the boat in. So walnut. Get that nice and dark. I might use a bit of Payne's Grey to even deepen that up further. Um, burnt Sienna. A 
we'll go straight in with burnt sienna actually and then let's get a bit of Payne's grey and just deepen that up all right I'm, I'm delaying because I'm scared. A bit of Payne's Grey in there. I'm just going to fill that in. And then Walnut Brown. Okay. I'm going to go in here with Magenta. I know, but I'm doing it. Okay, it's in now. Can't back out now. Magenta. And this keeps with our earthy tones and all the other colours that we've been using. But we're going to go over it just so it's not so stark, I suppose the word is. Okay, then we're going to go over that with a little bit of Vista. And then back in with our uh, magenta. There we go. Actually, it's not bad. Bit of Payne's grey. I just wanted it. You know, a little colour, but our natural earthy tones. But keeping her really bright. So I think that works really well. Okay, we're going to turn to the bag. And we're going to use Payne's Grey, the Magenta and the Middle Purple Pink. So I'm going to go in with Payne's Grey everywhere I want it dark. So I'm going to want some little creases up here, I think. Bring that down. And the base of the bag dark. Up this edge and down here. Yes, you can see. Like that. Let's cover up that bit of blue that's got on there. Okay, I'm going to go over the Payne's Grey with magenta. So that will become really dark and intense, like it did at the front of the boat. And then we're going to plop in the um, middle purple pink. I don't know if we need something lighter. Or not. I actually really like the richness of that. And then we can put a design on that with a gel pen or something. Put the design back in that Rita had put on there. I don't know about the carpet yet. <laughs> okay, let's get that lovely and dark and then when we put a design on there we can put um yellow or something on there just so it really pops out okay the same for the same for the little bow at the top I'm going to do the edges dark on this side out here out here get that magenta in there yeah and then I'll get like a yellow gel pen or something something that's like what's the opposite of purple yellow is it yeah yellow on the color wheel the opposite of purple is yellow so that would go really well I've missed a bit of blue there and then we'll take our middle purple pink and put that in okay Perfect. I know it looks a bit dark at the moment, but when we get our design on there. Okay, so what I might do, 
Let's make sure I'm happy with the colouring. Is get some white Posca on there because that will come through pink. But then we can put gel pen on the top. So let me get my white Posca. And we will put these circles in. And I might have to go over those a couple of times, like I said. It's very frustrating. Can't see where they are now. One there. That's one up here. One there. Any more? No, leave it at that then. Just clean off my Posca. Gosh, it really does pick up the colour. Okay. All right, now we're going to do this, um, these plants. We're going to use, um, what have we got here? Terracotta, um, brown ochre and light yellow. So, um, it's not, yeah, light yellow ochre, sorry. So I'm going to go over all of it with the light yellow ochre. And I'm not activating these bits because A, they're tiny, and B, um, um, B, I don't know why B, just because. Okay, then we're going to go in with the brown ochre. So look like they're sort of dried reed type plants, I think. That's what I'm going for. Bit of terracotta. And I think we'll go for a natural green. Let's have a look. What greens have we got? A dark green. Go with that one. Pine green, and we'll use that as the tie on it. Pine green. And a little bit of um, the permanent green as the ties round it. I'd like to just use reeds or vines. Keep it all natural. And then we will go in, let's go in with the pink again. Let's keep with our theme, shall we? Um, we'll go in with the middle purple pink on these little, they look like little bulrushes, don't they? But pink. I don't want anything to take away from the brightness of her dress. Um, we're going to pull some of that down in there too. There we are. I have to think about the carpet. I have no idea. Right, I want to deepen this up. So let's take some black. Just want that much darker there. Like that back part of the boat really came out dark, didn't it? So let's just deepen that up. And maybe under here. Can you see everything? Yeah. Okay. There we go, right, and then I want to lighten that. And what about if we take that? Let's try the middle purple pink before we do anything else. Yeah, that's better. Okay, yeah, that works. Pulls in, ties in the bag. And then let's have a little bit of walnut brown just in, in these. Just 
just in our wreaths. And we've got all sorts of colours going on there, and that works well. Okay, and I can't leave it alone, so a bit of magenta at the base of these. Alright folks, okay, let me see, let's come out, oh, I'm going to have to think about the carpet that she's got, the little rug that she's got in her boat, um, but I've got enough to be getting on with for a minute, so I'm going to go and finish all my fishies, um, oh, here, let's do these, before I go anywhere, let's do these, look. So we're going to take those two colours again. Let's take that pine green and not... Oh no, please no. Oh, it's okay. I've got a blob of pasta look. I thought it had gone all over my, the back of my book. There's a little bit, but I should be able to get that off. Oh, pain. Okay, so we're going to take the pine green and the permanent green and we're going to do these... Um, the little stems underneath our lilies here and we'll do this to the top and then we'll have to do a different colour oh, Lucy Lou I think you're getting tired I do apologise it's been a long day and then the thought of going back to work tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to. I do. I love the majority of the children, but it makes me tired. And so I'm just really hoping that membership takes off, and I can um, start to feel well and, you know, just enjoy life a little bit. Right, let's use the, those colours that we used for that. So terracotta, brown ochre and light yellow ochre. So if we go in with terracotta, it's like a seed head, isn't it, off the lilies maybe. Okay, brown ochre. And then um, light yellow ochre. Okay, then we can take... goodness me. Let's take our yellow Posca that we used earlier and just drop that in. Okay and while I'm here with you I'll just show you how much of that colour that is picked up. So I'm going to go back over with my white Posca. And I'm going to let that dry and then we can put some yellow in the centre of that. I think that'll look pretty cool. Let that dry. Okay, now other than the carpet I'm going to go off and finish everything that needs to be done and then we'll meet back up. I'll see you in a second. Oh my goodness guys I can tell you it's a miracle this page is getting out to you at all. I started to white out some lines around the um, water and my little Posca, this one, which is a new one, I'm going to open it out of the page. Splatted all over the page. So I actually use my paintbrush to pull it all out. Then redo some blue. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I love the effects. So I'm just taking the yellow Posca. We're going to come in and we're just going to finish some details together. I'm just going to put the yellow in the centre of that white that we did earlier. On that little bag. Okay. And then I thought we'd use the two yellows that we used to do the, the rug, because then it will really stand out. So um, light chrome yellow and light yellow glaze. Um, make it really stand out. Do we want something more? Hmm. Maybe a darker, just go a little bit orange. Let's try dark chrome yellow. Yeah, that's better. 
just a little bit more detailing in there. Yeah, what do you think, folks? It's a, it's a miracle, like I say, this page is coming to you with all the fluff ups that I've had. But okay, so um, my lovely friend Tammy brought me the Wildflower set of Thule art pens. I've been collecting them and I adore them. I, they're just so much more reliable, I think, than the Posca. And opaque. So we're going to look at these bubbles. Okay, so what my plan is, is to move you over so you can see. And I went over the birds and then had a mishap because the pen I'd used um, wasn't waterproof. Goodness, you wouldn't write you wouldn't be able to write it. So my plan is where we've got yellow, I'm gonna do pink bubbles, and then where we've got pink, I'm gonna do yellow bubbles. So let's see, let me get the um ticket down for you. So here are the gorgeousness of colours, aren't they amazing? Absolutely incredible colours, and there's names on the back of the box as well. So looking for a pink, I want a nice I want quite a bright pink, so if we go for 18, I don't remember what colour I used there. I'm going to give them a shake up and make sure that you can hear the, can you hear that? The ball rattling in there. And then just make sure they're flowing properly before you put them down. So I'm going to go carefully around all these pink, I don't know if that's bright enough. Let's try 19, actually, let's try 19, make sure that 19 is called, there we go, it's called Sweet Pea, that's better, I think that'll be nice and bright, there we go, oh yeah, that's better. go over that pale pink and then on the inside as you can see if you can see there I just put a little bit of white okay yeah I just I, these pens are magnificent and I think I mean I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets, and they go on. Um, there's more of them. So nine sets, are, not all of them are 28. Some of them, like the Earth and Skin set, are, how many are in? 36. So I'm not, I can't do the maths that quickly on camera, but, um, and I don't have all the sets. That's a fair amount of colours. And just look how they perform. I was going to say to you earlier though that the. Um... No, 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 no. No! Oh, I done paused a YouTube video. I'll get copyright. <laughs> um... What was I going to say to you earlier? Oh, that the pens perform so well over the uh, King Art crayons. They just work amazingly on them. Make that pink and that pink. And then we're going to switch and we're going to go to yellow. I'm going to have this big one as pink. Let's have that as pink. Look at that. And then we'll put a little bit of white inside them. And then let's switch to, I want a nice bright yellow. Now I don't think that that will be strong enough. I don't think so. I don't think that will show up enough. So let me see, I've got the yellow set. I know, I'm a spoiled brat. Let's see, um, put that one back. And where's the yellow set? Here's the yellow set. I glued little pegs to the um, the wood that I have holding my tripod up. You know, the little mini pegs. And um, I just 
clip my swatch up there so I can see them easy enough. Now, number two is beautiful. It's called Sunflower. And this is, like I say, the yellow set. Let's try that. I'm just going to bang for a minute. I've got to try and loosen that ball. If they've been sat for a bit, they get stuck. That's the only thing. Oh, come on. Okay. All right, let's go in with the sunflower. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? See how beautifully they're working? Well, you could if you were on camera. And hopefully, I can hide. Let's put a little bubble in there. I can hide that horrendous mistake there from that bird. <laughs> Yellow. Let's clean your tip off a bit. There we go. So do you get a bit clogged up when you're, um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put one there, hide that bird, and then I can go in with a bit of white. They do get a bit clogged up, um, like any paint pen, when you're going over wax, and of course we put um, Prisma over these, but um, I'm going to put a pink one there. Hide that awful mistake. Okay, let me get my, this better behave or I'm going to bin it. I'm going to lose it after all this time. Okay, so let's come back down to the pinks because they'll be dry. And then I'm just going to put a tiny bit of white inside each one. Which will help its appearance of being a bubble. Just going to find the edge of them and just just stuff a bit of white in there. Make that one all white. And I don't have um, I haven't noticed with the um, King Art crayons either that there's that much bleed once you've activated them. I've missed a bubble. Of course I have. Of course I have. You know, like with the um, watercolour pens, when you put Posca over it, it'll pick up that colour underneath. I haven't noticed that on the on doing these over the um, King Art crayons. So I don't know if it's the Thule Art pens that are that thick and opaque, or if it's um, the makeup of the King Art crayons. I'm not sure. So if anybody's used them and they know. That would be really interesting if you could let me know, if you're still with me after all this jibber-jabbering and how long it's taken. I'd be very impressed if you are. Right, let me get that. I'm just going to wipe that out and come back in with the colour. I'll go back in with the colour when I've done. Just get rid of that black. It was really bugging me. It really upset me. Um, I was so loving this page and everything that well, not everything, but a lot has gone wrong. And that's why it's taken so long for me to get the video out to you. It's trying to fix errors. Um, and different bits and bobs. But that, I'm just going to gonna have to let that dry. And not make the same mistake again. Let's take that black out there. And there. Any more? I haven't done. Have we got any more anywhere else? No. That one needs a bit of white. 
Okay, right, let's come out and have a look. Is there anything else? Let me just move all my treats out the way. Let's see, come out and have a look. Here she is. Oh, I never thought we'd make it, folks. I'm going to have to let those dry and then I'll go over that again. Got a bit of a fluff up there, look. I'm faffing. Don't do what I do, folks, because this is where um, I end up messing the page up. I'm trying to step away, but it's that, I don't know what that, you know, that perfectionism that things have to be, oh, I don't know. And I'm never going to reach it. You're never going to get it. Even um, an accomplished professional artist is going to look at that work and have and, and critique it. So I am never going to reach that level. So I'm just going to have to sort of wind my neck in <laughs> and sort it out. Anyway, my lovely people, I'm so sorry that it's taken so long to get it up to you. It has felt like a labour of love trying to um, get everything done and deliver it as well as I wanted to to you. I love the pencils. I'm in love with the King Art crayons. I love the new technique of our clouds. Just everything. And um, uh, Yeah, I, I've loved it. And I'm faffing. Look, that's going to annoy me. Uh. <laughs> My goodness. So... Um, I'm going to leave it alone. Stop it, Lucy. Just stop. I am going to go off and I am going to do the mammoth task of editing. And then I'm going to get this up to you tonight. It's now quarter past ten. Goodness only knows what time I get it up to you, but it's coming. So my apologies for it taking five days to get to you. I, I, you know, that's not, it's not fair. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, until we meet each other again in the very near future, please like the video if you did and consider coming over and joining our happy little family in the membership um, colouring uh, romantic country so until we meet again in the next few days take really good care of yourselves and i'll see you very soon night night <laughs>